Hey everybody, Ron Shalvis, the Silver Fox with Silver Fox Sports. Uh, two weeks ago when I was shooting uh, my first intro vlog, I uh, had a football game that night and lo and behold, I pulled my hamstring. So I wanted to go over hamstring recovery uh, or even any muscle recovery, the same principles apply to help you recover quickly and get back on track so you can get back onto the rails, the field, the court, whatever you're going to do. So the most important thing first is to be able to evaluate your injury. You have to know how severe it is. If it's a total tear, then you need medical attention, you're gonna have surgery, you know, that type of thing. Most pulls are just microfibers that are pulling apart in your leg or your in your muscle, and they will heal on their own, and you just wanna do things to help them heal correctly and quickly. So, um, but the next thing I you, you have to do as you go through, if, if you're gonna compete in many sports, or do parkour, free running, all those things, or anything you enjoy doing, and you're going to have deal with injuries, you have to learn your body. You have to learn how your body re responds to certain types of therapy, how your body recovers, uh, so you can know the best method of therapy to strengthen it and get you back out. So I kind of use each injury as a learning opportunity. You know, if I do this type of therapy, this type of strengthening on an injury, and then... Um, did it help it recover quickly? Did it seem like it worked? Kind of learn from that and just kind of learn to read your body, pay attention to how things feel. Most of my injuries I can evaluate pretty quickly uh, on how severe it is. And uh, and so I kind of know what how, how much time I need to stay off it before I can start therapy. So let's talk about general principles of an injury. If you get injured and you have no idea how severe it is because sometimes an injury hurts it feels like your legs falling off and you can't walk on it you can't put any pressure on it it feels like man I just ripped it in half it is so bad the first thing they always say they, they uh, you, you want to get off it say you tweak it but you can still limp on it don't go back out on the quarter field and keep doing stuff you, you want to stop immediately you want to get ice on it you want to get ice on it you want to wrap it with an ace bandage so it compresses it, so it will help minimize the swelling. It's that swelling that really takes makes it a lot longer to heal. Is because you have all the swelling fluids in there that uh, just don't let your body heal as correctly. So if you can keep it compressed, it keeps some of that fluid out, helps the blood flow. So first thing, you got to stop. You got to quit playing on it. You got to stop immediately. Go get ice. You want to ice it, wrap it up so you have some compression. And you also want to keep it elevated. You want to try to keep it elevated above your heart, is what they say. Uh, I like to lay on a couch, put it up on the back, and watch football or, or something like that. So <clears throat> you uh, so what I like to do is ice it three, maybe four times that first day for about 15, 20 minutes. And then uh, and I'll keep it compressed. So if I'm not icing it, I'm keeping it wrapped up with an ace bandage. Not tight where it's like really uncomfortable or cuts off the circulation. But so where it's snug, where it's not uncomfortable, but it just kind of helps keep that support. So I will evaluate it and then I will say, okay, after the first day goes by, you always want to wait at least 24 hours before you start thinking about strengthening it. So after the first day, I'll kind of evaluate, say, okay, it's just a minor pull, so I can go ahead and start doing therapy on it, slightly doing the things. If it's more severe and I still can't walk on it, then I'll wait another day, usually two to three days if it's if it's more severe. Um, so, like this injury wasn't too severe. I could walk on it that night. I limped on it the next day. And uh, so I knew that within 24, 48 hours, I could start doing things on it. So let's kind of go through that process. First couple days, I'm icing two or three times a day, keeping it compressed. So I use the ace bandage. It's really helpful. Kind of keep that elastic you can put it out as tight as you want when i would go through the day like i'm at work and running around from job to job the things that i do i uh have this uh sleeve a little black uh hamstring sleeve it just kind of slides up over keeps it snug one of the big advantages to these things is it, uh, it's like a wetsuit material it keeps it warm and the warmer things are it kind of helps the blood flow and it's the blood flow you need to uh, help keep circulating. The blood flow brings nutrition to help replenish the muscles so they can keep repairing themselves so you can help get it going. 
So usually the first day, um, if I can, I will start stretching it. So I'll just usually do kind of the basic stretches, but the, the goal on stretching is we're not thinking stretching like, oh, I want to see how limber I can get. We're thinking I want to slightly stretch it. I don't want to feel any pain at all. No pain at this point. If, if you're feeling pain, you're probably going to be re-hurting it and it can take longer to heal. So it's more you're stretching it, no pain. If you're able to, you can kind of uh, massage it a little bit as you're doing it. And so it's really light stretching. I mean, just very light. And do this a few times a day. At the same time, I will also work into some strengthening exercises because I want to start strengthening those muscles. Now, the principle behind this is when you have a tear, it's kind of like microfiber, you know, like the microfibers are ripping. But in a way, I kind of picture it like a, a lobster tail, a cooked lobster tail, how it floats up out of the shell. Is um, The fibers are all kind of broken and kind of like this. So what you're doing by stretching it and starting to strengthen it is you're starting to lay down those fibers or stretch them out and kind of put them, help them repair in line. Scar tissue is when the fibers repair and they kind of repair all crisscross wise. So they're um, kind of get pretty, um, it doesn't heal as quickly and sometimes it won't heal fully because of these scar tissues. And to really get to heal fully, you have to break them down again, get them to reline. And so kind of picture as the fibers are healing, they, they, they're rebuilding in layers. And so as they're laying down the layers on top of each other as they're rebuilding, you just want those to all fibers to all be in line. So really important, stretching and strengthening, huge. So to strengthen it, I like the hamstring especially. Now, this will apply also to a calf pull, to many other injuries also on how to get it recovered quickly. So um, in, uh, therapy for hamstring is uh, you could sit there, you've seen those uh, leg curl machines where you sit there and kind of, you have the machine and it's kind of pulling your leg down like this. Uh, that works good. You have a bungee, you can hook a bungee to something, hook it to your foot and kind of work it here. You can lay on your stomach and uh, hook a bungee onto your foot and hook it and you, so you're pulling, working out that hamstring also. Now remember at this point you're not, you still don't want to feel any pain. So if it's, if your tension's too high, you got to lower it. You don't want to feel any pain. It's okay to get it tired, and that's actually the goal is to get it tired to start working the muscles. The other benefit to strengthening it is you're wanting to strengthen all the muscles around the injury. So as those muscles strengthen, they will help support the injury to help you get back on track sooner. So um, the other things I like to do is uh, massage it. Massaging is really important. kind of helps the blood flow. If you have somebody who can massage it for you, that's always the best option. But if you don't, you kind of want to just kind of massage it for, you know, five to ten minutes as you're maybe watching TV or something like that. And you're just going to push across the tendons, across the muscle, back and forth. Just different different ways you're going to do that that will help that uh, work out. Um, here's a little ice pack that I, I bought for like ten bucks somewhere online. I just keep in my freezer. I like to have two or three of them because I'm always, sometimes I'm already uh, icing my shoulder, my hamstring, my knees, just, you know, kind of what happens when you get older. Actually, it happens to anybody. Um, but here's some other things. A um, little massager. It kind of helps make it a little easier uh, to massage out. A little vibrator. Um, I have one of these things, a little pokey ball that uh, kind of roll up and down. Kind of helps the circulation. Help stimulate it. And uh, this thing's kind of helpful too. It's a pokey ball. Kind of put it under your leg and against the floor, and then you're going to roll it back and forth onto that, kind of working the muscles out. And uh, so another good option. And then uh, the last one are these foam rollers. These are real popular now. They're great for stretching, warming up, or cooling down after uh, training. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of different techniques on doing these. You can watch videos, give you different ideas. But the idea is that you're going to want to roll it across all the way up, all the way back. When you get to the sore part, you kind of want to slow down or stop for maybe 10 seconds or so. Roll it a little farther, and you'll just feel that muscle. It's increasing 
circulation, blood circulation, stretching a little bit, and uh, just really valuable, really helpful. So, uh, so now that you've been doing this for about a week, depending on how you're feeling, you might be getting close to wanting to start getting back on, uh, start training again. The, th the biggest thing is it's really easy to re-injure it the second time. It's easier the second time than the first time. If you're not fully recovered and you get in there, if you're in a game, like a competition type game, it's really easy to injure it because, you know, you get that competitive going and you don't even think. You just, boom. I played football a week later and it was feeling pretty good. It was about 80% and I was playing on defense at the time and a guy threw the ball and I knew I could intercept it so I just accelerated. Boom, I'm going to get it. And then by three steps, it's like, oh, I got a twinge. And so I uh, it's like, okay, I got to cut back. I cannot accelerate like that. So it was kind of a slow game for me the rest of the game. So, but when you re-pull it a second time, it can be even worse than the first time. So you got to be really careful. And it's part of reading your body, having the mental discipline. That's the hard thing is that mental discipline of being able to, because, um, you you know, if you're active and you're motivated and you're wanting to train, you're wanting to compete, you just want to get out there and do it. And you just got to force yourself. Don't do it. Because if you re hurt it, that game means nothing. Or that, that training or that game means nothing. If you re hurt it and put you out another three weeks or four weeks. Uh, so you got to discipline yourself that short period of time. Get it fully recovered so you can be into it thoroughly. A couple other things that uh, people use. Uh, kinesio tape. Some some people really like kinesio tape. It's kind of a stretchy elastic tape that sticks. And you can watch videos on how to put this on. I'm not gonna go over that. But um, for me, I don't notice much difference with these uh, for really strong muscles. Like hamstring, I don't notice much. I'm trying to do it for my Achilles, I don't notice much. My calf, calves are so strong. I, I think the five pounds of strength this adds to me doesn't only helps a little bit. So, but you got to try it and see if it works for you. You may notice a bigger difference. And that's kind of what you'll hear so much stuff out there on the internet. Oh, do this or do this. And, but you got to learn your body, try different things, experiment with different things, learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And, uh, and you'll just be able to help keep yourself healthier and stronger and so forth. Uh, back to the sleeve as you're recovering, wear this, you can wear this all day long. It will just keep it warm. I've noticed that even sometimes I'll sleep with it. Uh, because it's just keeping it warmer. I'll wake up and it'll be sweaty under there. Uh, but it just keeps it warmer and uh, and I believe it's, it feels like it's helping it get better. So that's what I have. Uh, go ahead and if you have any questions, uh, leave some questions. Uh, if you have other types of injuries, I, I'm not a physical therapist. I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. Uh, so, uh, But happy to, to talk through my experiences, things that uh, have been uh, I've gone through. Over 30 years of training and dealing with injuries, I've kind of figured out a lot of things for my specific body, but general principles that will help you overall. Awesome. Subscribe and uh, look forward to the next video. Thanks. Goodbye.